iron. In this video, we are going to see about iron deficiency anemia. So, this question can be asked either as a short essay question of 6 marks or even as a part of the essay question. So, we will see each one by one. So, first of all, when it, when it is asked as a short essay, you can start the short note by mentioning the definition of anemia and its classification. You just have to mention it, no need to explain much. And then you can write about the role of iron, like how, what are the sources, how is it absorbed, how is it transport and storage in a very concise manner. And then you can write about various causes of iron deficiency anemia, what are the symptoms and uh, what are the signs, what are the investigations that you have to do and what is the management. So these are the points that are expected when it is asked as a short essay. So let's start with the first one. So how do we define anemia? So anemia is defined as a decreased RBC count or hemoglobin content of blood below the normal level for the age and gender of the subject. See in this all these components are important. It is not just simply a decreased RBC count or not just decreased hemoglobin. You also have to mention about the age and gender of the subject because normally what is normal for males might not be normal for females. So that is the definition of anemia. Next, moving on to the classification. So we know anemia can be classified in two ways. One is the etiological classification, which is also called the Whitby's classification. And then we've got the morphological classification, also called the Wintrop's classification. So you can just um, mention what this classification is. So etiological classification means it's basically based on the cause. So it can be a deficiency anemia, a blood loss anemia, hemolytic anemia, a plastic anemia or anemia due to chronic diseases. And the morphological classification that is Wintrop's classification is based on how the RBC looks like. So you can have a normocytic normochromic anemias, microcytic hyperchromic anemias and macrocytic normochromic anemias. So this is the classification of anemia. Now we will move on to the sources of iron. What are the different sources by which a person can ingest iron? So the different sources are pulses, liver, ragi, cereals, green leafy vegetables and dates. So these are the different sources of iron. Now, so after this iron, iron is being uh, ingested, what happens it is it will reach the small intestine and from the brush border of the small intestine it is absorbed into the plasma. Now inside the plasma it combines with a protein called apotransferrin to form transferrin. So see iron cannot travel by itself inside the plasma. It needs a transporter. So it combines with apotransferrin and converts it to transferrin. And then in this bound form, this iron can have multiple roles. Either it can be utilized by the RBCs to form hemoglobin or it can be utilized by the tissues for various activities. It can act like an enzyme, it can, act, uh, it can uh, produce hemocytrin, it has got multiple roles in the tissues. And if there is excess of iron, it can be stored in the form of ferritin in the liver. Okay, so th this is how iron is utilized inside the body. Now two small things that you can remember here is iron is actually absorbed in the form of ferrous but once it reaches the plasma it is converted to ferric. So there are multiple small small uh, points there but I think at this level this, this overview would be enough. Like it is absorbed goes to the plasma and goes for different goes to the different organs for its various roles. So what is the cause for iron deficiency? So iron deficiency can occur either due to inadequate dietary intake of iron or increased loss of iron or even increased demand of iron. One more reason is there could be a decreased absorption of iron. So see either the person is not taking much or there is increased loss or there is increased demand or there is decreased absorption. So what are the various conditions in which you can find this? So decreased or inadequate intake of iron can occur in milk fed infants because milk does not contain much iron. If the person has a poor socioeconomic status that means they are not having nutritive food in anorexia and in elderly individuals you can have in the inadequate dietary intake. Increased loss may be due to uterine bleeding in females that is when there is excessive menstruation as in uh, five case of fibroids or when there is postmenopausal bleeding and all. Or it can be bleeding from other areas like gastrointestinal bleeding or from other sources. 
Sometimes there could be increased demand of iron as in the case of infancy, childhood, adolescence, in menstruating females and in pregnant females. In all these conditions, they've got increased demand but their intake is not matching its demand. Or it can be due to decreased absorption of iron. So suppose there's a partial or total gastrectomy that could affect the iron absorption because if, if there is an eclorhydria, that means there is no HCL present. So there's no acidic environment present for the absorption of iron. In that case also there could be decreased absorption and in case of intestinal malabsorption diseases. So these are the various causes by which you can have iron deficiency. So remember the main headings. So then you'll, you'll be able to uh, guess what, what comes under it. Okay. So what are the different clinical features of iron deficiency anemia? So there will be general symptoms as occurs in all other cases of anemia. It is not specific to iron deficiency which includes generalized muscular weakness. It is a common symptom due to, your, due to muscle hypoxia. And then you can have tiredness, easy fatigability, which is basically due to inadequate oxygen delivery to the muscles. See, when you don't have enough iron, which means that you don't have enough heme, which means your oxygen carrying capacity is decreased. So because there is a decrease in oxygen delivery, you get tired easily. And you can have restlessness, confusion, drowsiness, all due to cerebral hypoxia. So here, see here, the basic problem for anemia is you'll have hypoxia. So that is why you have all the general symptoms of anemia. Now the important signs that you will look for in, in the case of anemia is the skin and mucous membrane. So the most common sign is the pallor. So as you can see in this image, when you look at the lower palpebral conjunctiva, it will be definitely pale in case of anemia. And that is due to the deficiency of the red colored hemoglobin in the blood. Here also you can see that there's a huge difference between these two. This, this palm is much more pale when compared to this. Okay. You also should look for any angular stomatitis that is cracks at the corner of the mouth. That is also an important sign for anemia. Now there could be other changes especially in the nails wherein the nails become dry, soft and spoon shaped and that is called coelonychia. See you can, as you can see in the image it, there is a slight depression there resembling that of a spoon. And the esophagus, you can have development of membranous webs. See, as you can see in the picture, you can have webs here, which causes dysphagia. And that is called plumber vincent syndrome. This also can occur in anemia. Moving on to the systemic changes that you can have in cases of anemia. In the cardiovascular system, we can see an increased heart rate, which is basically a compensation for the reduced oxygen carrying capacity. We can have palpitation which is awareness of, one, of one's own heartbeat and also worsening of any existing cardiac disease which because there is an increased strain on the heart because it is pumping more. So that could be worsening of any existing cardiac disease. What about respiratory system? See basically I said the problem is hypoxia so we need more oxygen. So because of that the lungs will, will increase the rate of breathing. So it is the body's attempt to meet the tissues, meet the tissue oxygen demands. Also, when you exert yourself, there will be dyspnea on exertion, which is difficulty in breathing during physical activity. And in the central nervous system, one interesting feature that you can see is the pica. That means you have a craving for, craving to eat non-nutritive substances like dirt, ice and all. It is especially seen in children. And you can also have fainting, which is uh, due to cerebral hypoxia. One more, one more feature that you commonly see in anemia is lethargy and headache. It means you will not have the enough uh, energy to do the work. So you will be more lethargic which is due to the reduced oxygen supply to the brain and you will be feeling sleepy all day. So you will have the drowsiness again due to cerebral hypoxia. So these are the different features which are attributed to cerebral hypoxia. So in the gastrointestinal system, the patient may experience anorexia or even nausea. And the reproductive system, the females can experience amenorrhea, that is absence of menstruation. So the, these are the different clinical signs that you can expect in case of anemia. Okay. So now we'll just see that essay question. A 33-year-old female woman comes to the hospital with complaints of fatigue for many months. On physical examination, she has pale conjunctiva and spooning of nails. Her hemoglobin is 8, PCV is 20 and MCV is 76 femtoliter. Stools are negative for occult blood. So let's see, what are the symptoms here? The symptoms are she's got fatigue. As I said, fatigue is a general symptom of anemia. And 
what are the different signs here we've got pale conjunctiva that is pala she's got spooning of nails which is coelonychia and what about the lab investigations they've already done the hemoglobin level and it is 8 so is it normal see we know that in adult females she's a woman so in adult females the normal range should be around 12 to 15.5 so here it is 8 which is very less the packed cell volume is 20 what is the normal in males it is 47 plus or minus 7 and in females it is 42 plus or minus 7 which means the pcv is less it is only 20 percentage it also means that the rbc what is pcv packed cell volume is the proportion of the volume that is occupied by the red cells so when that is so less is just 20 percent it means that the rbc volume is less which in turn leads to microcytic and what about the mcv here it is 76 femtoliter and the normal range is 78 to 96 so all these things point to a microcytic picture which is commonly seen in iron deficiency anemia okay so the most common lab investigations that we have to do is hemoglobin pcv and blood indices right so what is the clinical condition obviously because of all this it must be iron deficiency anemia next we will see about the investigations to be done so the first and foremost you have to do a hemoglobin level you have to find out the hemoglobin level and obviously if it is decreased it means it is anemia and then we have to look for the red cell indices so that it will be easy for us to find out what type of anemia it is so in iron deficiency anemia the mean corpuscular volume will be decreased the mean corpuscular hemoglobin will be decreased and the mchc will also be decreased and then we have to check the blood picture in the peripheral smear we can see the rbc morphology and usually in iron deficiency anemia it will be hypochromic because that it, that there is a deficiency of in hemoglobin the cells will be smaller that means that means it will be microcytic and there will be anisocytosis that is variation in size and poikilocytosis so what do you mean by anisocytosis and poikilocytosis that will be more clear with the help of this diagram so see this is how the blood of iron deficiency anemia will look like so as you can see there are small cells like this okay which is smaller than the normal rbc size which is called microcytic cells and then you can see that the central pallor is much higher when compared to the normal one that is because of decreased hemoglobin that means there is hypochromia and anisopoikilocytosis means anisocytosis means there will be variation in size you can see that there are some rbcs that are big some that are small and there are some that are variation shape in shape like you can see that some are more pencil shape so even though this depends on the severity of anemia this is also a sign of iron deficiency anemia so hypochromia microcytic anisocytosis and poikilocytosis these are the different features that you can see in the blood picture of anemia so what are the other investigations that you can do in case of iron deficiency anemia you can go for biochemical tests which includes the level of iron so when you check the iron level it is often decreased the normal range is around 60 to 160 then serum ferritin will also be very low what is ferritin remember ferritin is a storage form of iron so obviously all the stores would be deficient in iron because there is iron deficiency so it will be very low indicating poor tissue iron stores you can also check for total iron binding capacity that means how much uh, what is the binding capacity total iron binding capacity so this will be increased because you want you want more iron so the body body's iron binding capacity will be increased so that you can bind on to any iron that you can find okay so this it will be increased which reflects the body's attempt to capture more iron from the bloodstream due to the low iron levels so these are the different biochemical investigations that you can do and of course you can also do other investigations like bone marrow but when you do a bone marrow aspirate you can see that there will be a phenomenon called erythroid hyperplasia what do you mean by erythroid hyperplasia see normally the myeloid cells will be more than the erythroid cells but in case of anemia the the number of erythroid cells will be more so that is why it is called erythroid hyperplasia increased production of erythroid precursors in response to the chronic anemia is called uh, erythroid hyperplasia so that you can see in uh, iron deficiency anemia when you check the bone marrow you can also see that 
the precursor cells are much more smaller that means you have micro normoblastic cells in case of erythropoiesis and in, instead of the normal erythro norm, normal uh, erythropoiesis precursor you will have much smaller ones also the marrow i marrow iron stores will also be deficient which indicates a poor iron storage in the bone marrow okay so these are the different investigations that you can do so initially we started with hemoglobin blood indices then the peripheral smear then we talked about the biochemical findings now bone marrow findings so how do we treat iron deficiency anemia so the most common treatment is oral iron supplements so you can give oral iron preparations like ferrous sulfate uh, for people diagnosed with iron deficiency anemia now if they are severely anemic you can go in for parenteral treatment with with the uh, iron dextran complex you can give it as a deep intramuscular injection in severe cases of anemia and finally you can also have you can also should treat any other underlying causes for iron deficiency anemia like sometimes there might be a parasitic infection like uh, you can have uh, worm infestation which is which is causing iron deficiency anemia so you have to do a deworming treatment so as to eliminate the parasites that will be causing or exacerbating anemia okay so that in, that concludes our treatment part so thus we have uh, discussed this essay and also the short essay in which we talked about the different points the definition the classification then the role of iron the cause the symptoms signs as well as investigations and management so i hope this video is useful for you thank you